Hey there, so today we're going to be talking about sex. You know what, it's okay, this is a biology class so we're allowed to say that. We are actually going to be talking about um, sexual reproduction and how we, our bodies create the cells that are a part of sexual reproduction. Alright, so here's a couple facts for you. Um, my, me, the meiosis is preceded by interphase, just like mitosis is, and the main important part of that is chromosome replication. So we still have the replication of DNA occurring in this phase, super important to know. Um, it consists of two divisions, not just one this time. So it goes through a whole series of divisions through the first part, and then it divides again in the second part. And I will go into more detail and show you um, what each of those looks like in just a few minutes. Um, the original cell starts out as diploid, so it is a 2N cell. It has two sets of chromosomes, and at the end result, we get four daughter cells produced that are haploid, so they each have one set of chromosomes. A little bit more about meiosis. The resulting daughter cells contain half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Okay, so that is what haploid means. It produces the gametes. This process either makes egg cells in females or it makes sperm cells in males. Um, this occurs in the males in the testes and it's a process called spermatogenesis and in the females this occurs in the ovaries and it's called oogenesis. Just a few more facts. Humans, remember I said that each organism, each species has a different um, number of chromosomes in each of their cells. Humans have 46 in our body cells, so humans start with 46 double-stranded chromosomes. After the first division, it ends up with 23 double-stranded chromosomes in those cells, and it is considered at that point a haploid cell. After the second division, we will have 23 single-stranded chromosomes, and it is still a haploid cell. And this occurs in our germ cells, and those are the cells that produce the gametes. Alright, so that says fertilization, putting it all together. So if we have a haploid sperm cell right here, and in this one you can tell the haploid number is 3. So if we have a haploid sperm cell and a haploid egg cell, when those come together during fertilization, we end up with a diploid cell. Okay, it is restoring the diploid number when this happens. So um, a fertilized egg cell is called a zygote. Okay, so we end up with a diploid zygote. <clears throat> so when we're looking at the replication of chromosomes, replication is the process of duplicating a chromosome, and we've talked about this happening in S phase of interphase. It has to occur prior to division, and the replicated copies are called sister chromatids. And remember, we've talked about before they're held together in the centromere. Okay. So we're, I'm introducing a new word. Um, today we're also going to be talking about homologous chromosomes. So if you look here, this is one chromosome. This is another chromosome. Each of these chromosomes, even though they have different genetic information, and you can tell because of the different colors here and here, what this is telling us right here, it has the same gene, different alleles. Okay, So this might be the same gene for the ability to um, have a hitchhiker's thumb. Okay, So this one is saying, yes, hitchhiker's thumb, this gene combination is saying no hitchhiker's thumb. So it's the same gene type. The alleles, that word that's right there, just means um, the different combinations, the different sequences that, that tell the different genes that can be um, inherited. Okay, So this person on this chromosome right here, gene X, they have an allele for hitchhiker's thumb. And on this chromosome, gene X says no hitchhiker's thumb, okay? We call these homologous chromosomes because they have the same gene type on both of them. And 
um, the prefix homo means the same, so homologous chromosomes, or this is homologs, are chromosomes that have the same gene type on them. These are sister chromatids because they are identical to each other. They have the same genes and they have the same alleles, that same genetic information. And those will split, whoop, sorry, let's go back to that. When, um, when the cell divides from meiosis, these will pull apart. All right, the purpose of meiosis is to form haploid gametes. Meiosis has to reduce the chromosome number by half. The fertilization then restores that diploid number, okay? So if you see here, let's say this is an egg cell, this is the cell from mom, this is the cell from dad. If each of those parents gave two copies of the same chromosome, of the same type of chromosome, the child then would be polyploidy. They would have four sets of those chromosomes, and that's too much. That would be a bad thing. So meiosis reduces the genetic content. So here we have this egg cell from mom that has one of those chromosomes, sperm cell from dad that has one of that certain type of chromosome. So when those come together to fertilize that cell, then the child will have just the right number of chromosomes. It, that re that's what we call restoring the diploid number. All right, so there's two parts for this cell division. Here's our original cell, and you can tell um, these are the homologous chromosomes, okay? And we'll say that the blue one is the paternal chromosome and the green one is the maternal chromosome. So this cell from this person, these were inherited from their parents, okay? So when this cell goes through the first meiosis phase, it's going to split up those homologous chromosomes. So one set of homologous chromosomes or one set of those homologous chromosomes will go in one cell, and the other half will go in this cell, okay? The sister chromatids are still together. So because of that, we have to reduce that number again, which is why it has to go through meiosis a second time. So if you see here, these sister chromatids are being pulled apart, and now this cell, excuse me, this cell has one of each chromosome. This cell has one of each chromosome, and the same down here. So in meiosis 1, the homologs separate, and in meiosis 2, the sister chromatids separate. It starts out as a diploid cell, and it ends up as a haploid. So looking at meiosis 1, um, this is the, the reduction division, okay? So it starts out just as a normal cell would start. We've got our cell, the nucleus, we've got our centromeres, or sorry, our centrioles, the cells starting to get ready to divide. You can see here, this would be um, prophase, the nuclear membrane starting to break down. Our spindle fibers are starting to form. Metaphase, they're lined up in the center of the cell. Anaphase, the chromosomes are pulling apart. And then telophase, that says it's diploid. I'm sorry, this um, that's a typo. That should actually say it is haploid. But you could tell here that um, the homologous chromosomes have pulled apart in anaphase, and then the nucleus starts to restore. We're not done yet though, okay? Just a little bit more in detail. In prophase one, you can see here the chromosomes are hanging out. They're not really in any specific order yet, but the nucleus is starting to break down. Here the spindle fibers are starting to form, and I wanted to show you that right here, there's something happening. This is called crossing over. This is where homologous chromosomes touch, and wherever they touch, they switch genetic information. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit about that um, in a little bit later. All right, so the homologous chromosomes, you can see here, so if these are my chromosomes that are in my cells, this one would be inherited from my mother, this one would be inherited from my father, okay? And they each have sister chromatids, which means they have been replicated prior to this happening. Well, in prophase one, they form a tetrad, and all that means is the homologous chromosomes come together, okay? And it's called tetrad because, look, you can see there's four sister chromatids. They're all of the same genetic content, and they're all pushed together. So crossing over. 
Um, crossing over is where you can see here we've got our paternal, the one, if these are, again, if these are my chromos uh, chromosomes in my cells, this would be the one inherited from my father, this is the one inherited from my mother. Where they touch, they are going to exchange genetic information. Okay, so that when they pull apart, now, the one that I inherited from my father has a little bit of my mom's chromo uh, genes on it, and the chromosome inherited from my mother has a little bit of my father's genes on it. Um, the homologous chromosomes cross over each other, so wherever they touch, those um, genes are exchanged. And this produces genetic recombination. Okay, so what that guarantees us is that our offspring are not going to have the same combination of genes that we do. Okay, it's variation is what that's giving us. Now, what I want to point out here, which is pretty important, where they have touched, those are the same types of genes. Okay, so you can't switch a gene for... Um, hitchhiker's thumb with a gene for eye color. It doesn't work that way. Both hitchhiker, those both have to be hitchhiker thumb genes that switch, okay? Otherwise, you could get um, mutations and that would be a problem. Here's an actual picture of chromosomes, homologous chromosomes crossing over during Pervase 1. And this is just another way of looking at it. They kind of wrap up around each other, and wherever they come in contact with each other, they switch genes. It almost looks like they're switching socks. Um, crossing over multiplies the already huge number of different gamete types produced by independent assortment. And we will have a little bit more discussion about exactly what that means. So don't be too confused. So metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes line up in the center of the cell. This is anaphase 1. Sorry, my headings are getting cut off. Anaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes separate and they move to the opposite poles of the cell. The sister chromatids remain attached at their centromeres, but I want you to pay attention that where they have crossed over, now they have slightly different genetic information. Okay? Alright, and then telophase 1, the nuclear envelope reassembles. The spindle fibers disappear, cytokinesis divides the cell into two, and it's ready to start all over again. All right, in meiosis two, only one homolog of each chromosome is present in the cell. The sister chromatids now carry non-identical genetic information. Do you remember why that is? Hopefully you said it was because of crossing over. So even though those have the same gene types on them, because of crossing over, most likely they are non-identical at this point. Okay, so meiosis 2 produces the gametes with one copy of each chromosome, so one copy of every gene. This is what it looks like. So now we're reducing the number of um, chromosomes in the cells. So this is prophase 1. The nucleus is starting to um, disappear. In metaphase 1, the sister chromatids line up in the center of the cell. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids pull apart. In telophase 2, the nuclear envelope reappears um, and the cell starts to pull apart. And then um, at the very end of it, cytokinesis occurs again and we have four genetically different haploid cells. All right, so prophase two, the nuclear envelope disappears again in the spindle fibers form, sorry. Metaphase two, chromosomes align across the equator of the cell, just like before. Anaphase two, now the sister chromatids separate and move towards opposite poles. And in telophase two, the nuclear envelope assembles, the chromosomes decondense, so they become chromatin again. The spindle fibers will disappear, and then cytokinesis occurs so that each of those cells are divided into two. So results, gametes form, so we have egg cells or sperm cells. You get four haploid cells with one copy of each chromosome in each of them. 
The different combinations of alleles for different genes um, along the chromosome are a result of, are, are um, help with genetic variation. And that's really important. I just want to show you, this won't be on the test, but I think it's very interesting. There's a slight difference between how sperm is made and how eggs are made, okay? First of all, males don't start producing sperm until they are mature enough to do so, usually um, around the age of um, typically 12, 13, maybe 14. Um, it occurs in the testes. The two divisions produce four spermatids. And then those spermatids will eventually mature into um, sperm cells that are ready to um, do their job. And by that, I mean ready to fertilize egg cells. Men produce about 250 million sperm a day. It's a lot. Um, spermatogenesis occurs in the testes. And like I said, we start out with one cell and we end up with... Um, four uh, haploid gamete cells. And there's just another way of looking at it. Okay, ootogenesis is slightly different. Females are born with the same number of eggs that they will have for the rest of their life. Okay, now the ovaries hold those cells that will eventually become eggs. Females go through something called ootogenesis. Two divisions are going to produce what they call three polar bodies that are not large enough to become viable cells, so they will end up dissolving and dying, and then they produce one egg cell. Um, the polar bodies die because they don't have enough cytoplasm to, to sustain them. Um, the immature egg cells are called oocytes, and starting at puberty, one oocyte matures into an egg every 28 days. So, ladies, that's what actually causes your menstrual cycle. So this is what I was talking about. If you look here, these are the polar bodies, and they're all actually quite smaller than this egg cell. So from this whole process, you're only going to get one cell that's going to live because these are all split um, unevenly and are going to end up dying. The reason that it does that is because egg cells are a little bit larger than sperm cells, and they're meant to be that way. All right, that about covers it. We have one more video left for this unit, and it's talking more specifically about genetic variation. Um, but I think I'm going to stop here because that's a lot of information to chew. Really, what I want you to know is that of the whole process, you get four non-identical haploid cells and one major thing that happens in prophase one is crossing over and you need to understand what that is, okay? If you have any questions, make sure you write them down and we will make sure that we go over them in class.